Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this mountain weather update. Alright, let's jump into it. We've seen a great two or three days here with some snow accumulation across the west. So this is Jackson Hole. Snow continues for the rest of today. Then it will go light tomorrow and then there's, there's another heavy period that will come back in the forecast for a lot of the Tetons. In fact, the Tetons are one of my continuing bullseyes uh, in this forecast. Alright, let's go to Alta. So the snow is over there. It looks to me like this storm cycle produced almost 20 inches at the Alta area based on what they're showing there on their website. I mean, obviously now we're looking at clear skies and it's a really unfortunate forecast. Um, it's going to be a while. That's the bottom line. The whole storm track now is going to shift out of Colorado, out of Utah, and then up into Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, and BC. So it's going to be a waiting game. Now in Colorado, we're still seeing little surges on this northwest flow shroud the high peaks. We could still see another inch or two today, and then there's uh, potentially another little hit of some snow tomorrow, uh, and maybe one beyond that. I'll look at that coming up, but here's radar across the west. So this was the rich flow. Now what's going to happen is this is going to shift up in this direction. So that's going to take all that snow the bulk of it out of Utah uh, and Colorado, unfortunately. And this is going to be the trajectory up in this area, up in the uh, basically the northern Rockies for some time to come. All right, so let's jump into the, uh, the satellite. I want to give you the big view. So again, the white and the blues, that's going to be your moisture. And you can clearly see where this moisture is now going. It's going up there. The whole thing, again, starting to pivot up to the north. Here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm thinking as far as uh, the forecast period. So we talked about the shift. We talked about who it's going to favor through 1214. Now, here's the complicating factor. While I think we're going to see heavy precipitation for the Pacific Northwest, BC, Alberta, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, the issue is going to be the source region because there's a bit of an atmospheric river that's going to push in and be part of this, and that's going to bring the warm air off the Pacific. And so that, the bottom line is it will push the rain snow lineup. Now, if you've ever been through this, you know what that means. That means at the base of a lot of these ski areas, you could have an issue uh, trying to accumulate snow. In fact, it may be mixing with rain or rain. So that means you're going to have to be at the very highest of elevations, mid mountain and higher on most of these ski areas up there as this happens to get the best snow accumulation. Now, all that said, here are your best odds of accumulating snow in Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So here's how you read it. In Colorado, light residual snow, light, light additional accumulations um, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and then maybe another tiny push late, tw uh, late nine into 10. In Tahoe, you're going to have to wait until late 14 into 15 for light to moderate snow. So it's a long wait, a long wait for Utah, kind of the same timeline, late 14, 15, 16. Um, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC, that is not the case. We are going to have surges of moisture come in, but these are the areas where you're going to have to be mid-mountain and higher to get the best snow accumulations as a result of the warm air. So let's look at the atmospheric pressure anomalies. So this is 12.9 tw uh, on Tuesday. So higher than normal pressures in the middle of the atmosphere nosing in to a lot of the, uh, the west, especially California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and, Wyoming, and New Mexico. The battle zone is where you see these ripples. That's where we're going to see overrunning moisture with the atmospheric river. Um, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, BC, Alberta. Lower than normal pressures with colder than normal air and lake effect across the Northeast. Um, let's move ahead. 1211, very similar. Parade, a parade of clippers running down through the Great Lakes into the Northeast and lots of lake effects. Still looking at higher than normal pressures uh, across the West, warmer than normal air, and there's your battle zone. Um, through many of the same places in the northern Rockies with moisture. And finally, 1214, we start to see a shift. Our high pressure may get dislodged, and we might, might start to see a dip in the jet out here and lower than normal pressures move in. And this would be the next best hope of some colder air and some snow returning to parts of uh, uh, Utah, uh, California, 
and Colorado. We'll have to see. Now this is the complicating factor I was talking about. So this is what's going to bring all that moisture. This is the integrated vapor transport. This is moderate to strong IVT. This is the atmospheric river, in other words. And this is effective up here, right along that uh, Oregon, Washington state uh, border up there. So 45 and a half degrees north latitude. And that's where we're going to see a lot of warm air and a lot of moisture come in. I mean, guys, look at this. This is as if everything uh, fell as rain. Look at these magentas. That's 10 inches of liquid, heavy rain at lower elevations. And you can see the targeting zone right into this area. Tetons, Montana, central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana, um, the high Cascades, the high volcanoes, interior BC, Alberta, all of those places are going to get nailed. And then towards the end, late on the 14th into the 15th, 16th, we start to see the buckling of the pattern and some of that uh, moisture dropping south again. That's all rain, as if everything fell as rain. Let's change the vantage point to the southwest. Seven day total precip. 99% of the period, there's nothing. Very late, it moves into Tahoe. So let's do a simple 10 to 1. Snow forecast, same area. Deep purple is at least six inches. Bright pink is at least a foot. And where you see the whites, that's at least two feet of snow accumulation. And there's a lot of mountain ranges that are in that two foot range. So that is some rich moisture. All right, let's change the vantage point to the southwest. There's, again, 99% of the period, seven days out, there's nothing here. It's only very late that we see anything drop in. Here's my official snow forecast. I went back to the color-coded contours on this. These are the totals by uh, the close of business on 1214. So, again, where you see those magentas and those purples coming out, that's like a foot or more. Um, so in Colorado, let's just start there. Central to Northern Mountains with a couple of these additional surges or ripples on the Northwest flow, anywhere from one to eight inches of additional snow. I got nothing. It's very sad to see this. Nothing in Utah, nothing in California, Arizona, New Mexico, Southern Colorado. Now up here in the Tetons, we're looking good. 10 to 20 inches of accumulation, uh, 10 to 20 up here in the parts of Montana. Now, the issue with some of the lower elevation ski areas, again, is going to be the warm air and the rain snow mixing in. And so I had to cut down some of the totals. If you're higher up on the mountain, you're probably going to get more than what I'm showing here. Um, and that's going to be the case in Idaho as well, especially around Brundage up to Schweitzer. If you're higher up on the mountain, the numbers are going to be higher than what I'm showing here. Man, look at these numbers up here in interior BC and even Alberta. I went one to three feet in some of these spots. Look at Revelstoke. I mean, if you're higher up on the mountain, you're going to get 40, 36 to 40, very high up. Kicking horse, wow. Uh, Marmot, Bamp is back in the game. Fernie's in there. Um, elevation dependent at Red Mountain. Um, look at Whistler, three feet higher up. Baker, if you're higher up on the mountain at Baker, you're going to get more than 16. Guarantee it. Same at Stevens. I mean, these are all you know, again, it's elevation dependent, but you get the idea. There's some heavy snow. Late in the period, we start to see the, pu the pattern buckle, and then we will start to see some snow drop in to uh, parts of California and Utah. But again, this takes us through 1214, most of the day, close of business. Let's go up to the northeast. Um, it's, it's a uh, pattern of Alberta clippers, fast-moving areas of low, of low pressure and colder than normal temperatures, where you see the deep purples at least six, bright pink is a foot or more, and there are a lot of places that go six to 12, and uh, maybe even a foot or more off. There you go, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, Lake Michigan, some heavy lake effect. You can see how it comes in like three, three different waves, two, three. All right, here's my forecast for the Northeast. By the close of business on 1214, most places are four to eight, but there are definitely places that go 10, 12, Stowe, J Peak, Whiteface, over a foot at Snow Ridge because of uh, lake effect. All right, guys, let's end on the big western map here. So the bottom line is the pattern is going to shift to the north. It's going to warm up a little bit, and that's going to affect the rain snow line. But this will run through 1214. I always appreciate you guys tuning in here. Enjoy the new snow. Be safe out there. Take care, and thanks for tuning in.